another beautiful time in the presence of the Lord. This is the day that the Lord has made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. It's another wonderful time in God's presence and I'm glad to welcome you to our Life's Journey series, a place where God empowers us with revelation, illumination and give God guides us by the hand to lead us to the place of greatness. I am grateful and thankful to God that He's allowed us to see another beautiful day another marvelous day, a day that God himself has chosen to bless us, a day that God himself has chosen to enable us see and to bless us with all the blessings that heaven can afford and from and the plenteousness of earth beneath. I'm grateful to God and I know that you are also excited to be enjoying all of the, you know, the ambience that this season brings and I know that God has been most merciful and marvelous to you. And together I know that God will never leave us nor forsake us. I know He will bring us to our desired heaven by His grace. It's another exciting time in God's presence. And I have no doubt in my heart that God is said to bring us into that promised land, that place of splendor and wonderment, that place of greatness and goodness. And I am sure that God by Himself will lead the charge as He brings us to our greatness to, our, to our, the place of our glory and to the place of our enthronement. By the power of the Holy Spirit, I pray that your destiny will not flounder and your future will not fail in the mighty name of Jesus. Before we go into today's message, I'd like us to pray as our custom is asking God to guide us, to lead us and to, lead, to show us in the way to go and to give us utterance and that you know the flesh will be subdued by the power of the Spirit and that God's way will be uh, the only way to perfection and to glory in the mighty name of Jesus. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for another exciting time in your presence. We thank you for your magnanimity, your kindness, your favor. We thank you for the extent of your love, your love that is without measure, your love that is boundless. We thank you because we cannot measure the depth, the length, the height, O oh Lord, and the width of the love of God, which surpasses human understanding, which exceeds human comprehension. We thank you for today, for you carried us through the night into this marvelous day. You opened our eyes to behold the sun and our oh Lord to experience the bountifulness of your grace and the glory and the plenteousness of your glory. We thank you for today. We thank you for what you're said to do. We thank you for what you've already done. And we pray that the Spirit will guide us by giving us utterance this day to lead us in the way to go and that at the end of the day, all the glory, all the praise will be to your Son, Jesus Christ, even as we bow at your feet, casting down our crowns to give glory and praise to the one who has made us to give him pleasure. May our lives bring you pleasure this day as we worship, as we delve into your word by the power of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. In the mighty name of Jesus, we have prayed. We give God praise and glory, and we thank Him for another time. This month is our month of faith and fruitfulness. This is our month of faith and fruitfulness. And last week, we began by looking at a very, very, in my estimate, one of the most important topics in human existence and that is sustaining faith in a material world sustaining faith in a material world and i remember one of the highlights of last week was the fact that we realized that our faith is the most cherished instrument as our most cherished possession that we possess and therefore we must do all we can to possess to protect our faith from failing and our faith from being emasculated because once our faith is lost, we've lost everything. That's why the Bible says, what does it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his soul? So it doesn't matter your pursuit in life. If there is no faith in your heart, if there is no faith in this, in sustaining yourself in this material world, you have already lost everything. It doesn't matter what houses you may have, what companies you may have established, what empires you may have built if there is no faith you are nothing so jesus said what does it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his soul and in first peter 1 verse 6 he said 
knowing that the trying of your faith, which is much more precious than gold that perisheth, when it is tried, may be found unto glory and honor and praise of him. So it, it says that our, our faith is much more precious than gold and silver. And all the things that we may desire cannot be compared to faith. And so today, we're moving on to the next topic for this month. And today's topic is faith sublime in a world mundane. Faith sublime in a world mundane. We're looking at the sublimity of faith in a mundane world. We're looking at how that faith always will have the, the, the will always be the ultimate achievement for every believer in this material, materialistic. I remember last week also we talked about that, how the world is becoming increasingly materialistic, increasingly secular, and increasingly, uh, uh, you know, a world of consumerism. But today, we're moving a notch higher. We're looking at the sublimity of faith in all in this world the sublimity of faith in a world mundane and i pray god that as the holy spirit unveils the layers of this mystery to us it will bring us access face to face with who we truly are for when we truly discover discover who we are then our lives become a life of paradise and a life of testimony and that day the sons of god will shout for joy and the morning stars will sing together. That is the realization, the utmost, the peak of the attainment of our success is the realization of who we are. Once we discover that, we have achieved the greatest success in life. In the beginning, let us go back to Genesis. In the beginning, in Genesis chapter 1, verse from verse 25, God said, let us make man in our image. So, essentially, when God was to create man, the, the creation or the, the product of God's uh, creation, which is man, the ultimate of his creation, the, the crowning glory of God's creation, which is man, was man was created as a spiritual entity. Remember, he said, let us make man in our own image. God, as you know, is not, a, is not flesh and blood. God, as you know, has no physical nature. When he said, let us make man in our image, he's talking about his spiritual nature. You know, further down in the New Testament, Jesus Christ came and took on him the nature of, the nature of, Abraham, of, of Abraham's seed, and, and therefore that enabled him to walk on the earth. And that is a proof and a pointer that God created us as spiritual entities. In the same vein that Jesus had to take on him the nature of the seed of Abraham, so also man had to be cased and cased in this body called flesh in order for him to, to reign and to rule and to have dominion. Remember that at creation, God orchestrated man and gave man the command to have dominion. He said, and God said, and when God created man from verse 25, he said, he said, let us create man in our image, in the spiritual nature of man. And when God created man in his image, that spiritual nature, that spiritual imagery. So if this body dissolves, and when, you know, the Bible says, Paul it says that when this body, this tabernacle could be dissolved, we have a building of God, not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. First, Second Corinthians 5 from verse 1 to 4, when this tabernacle is dissolved, it means that when this encasement is moved, we go back to our original nature, that nature of the exact likeness like God, the spiritual attribution that God had, that God possesses, was what God created us with, because we live by His breath. His breath gave us life. And from His own testament, written in scripture he said let us make man when you make a thing in the image of something it means that you are replicating that thing in another format so when god said let us make man in our own image he says let us make man as a spiritual entity however in order for him to have dominion on the earth let us give him an encasement which is called his body and then that body enables him to live on this realm and at the end of time, or at the time when, our, when God says, okay, it's time to come, this encasement will be dissolved. And this encasement, once it's dissolved, be, 
goes back to his original nature and that nature is that spiritual nature so paul said that that our body is sown a natural body but it is raised up a spiritual body so he's saying man will go back to that original state and part of the attribution of that original state when god made us is that god gave us faith to be the preeminence of our attribution god gave us faith as the ultimate possession you know it's like when you see a human being there are certain features that you expect eyes nose mouth ears hand and you know and, and stuff like that so also when god created us because god operates by faith and because we share the nature of god do you know the bible says in first Corinthians, first peter he says and we are by, he says, we are partakers of his divine nature. Having escaped the corruption that is in the world to us. He says, we are partakers of his divine nature. He says, according at his divine power, are given unto us great and precious promises that by these we might be partakers of his divine nature having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. He's saying that there is a nature that we possess and that nature was given to us at creation. It is the similitude of the imagery of God. When God made us, he gave us the attribution of faith. Just like when you see a human being, a newborn baby, you see a mini, a mini nose, a mini, you see small eyes, you see small ears, and everything begins to grow. In the same vein, when God made us as spiritual entities and encased us in a body, the thing that we created us with was the faith in Him. And that's why Adam didn't need to have, you know, he didn't need to pray for faith. Adam just naturally had faith. Adam operated on the platform and on the, on the wavelength of faith. There was nowhere where Adam had to believe for faith. Faith naturally sprang up in Adam because Adam was living the pure, undiluted, unblemished life from creation. Until man fell, man then began to look for faith, even though faith is already in him. You see, you cannot get faith elsewhere. It's just like you cannot grow from external factors you grow by the things that goes on in your inside the food you eat and all of the materials that comes in are, are responsible for your growth but those things are already in place inside of you all you need is to put those things together in order for those you know ingredients and those materials needed for your growth so also faith is already resident in you faith is already was already part of your creation and so when we do the things, you know, and after the fall, the faith of man became uh, silent, if you like. The faith of man became dormant. That's the word I was using for. Faith became dormant. And when we come into, into the light, when we are born again, when we come born again, salvation reignites our faith that was already our attribution from creation. So faith is not something you acquire. Faith is something you develop just like you grow by, you know, uh, as you grow in age, your growth is, is naturally progressed by eating, by drinking, by observing the things necessary for growth. Your faith also is autochthonous to you from creation. God created you with faith. God created you by faith. Because God operates with faith. So also, you grow by faith. That faith is already in you. You expand by faith. That faith is already in you. All the faith you need to achieve success in life is already resident in you. All the faith you need to succeed in this world has already been embedded in you. How? From creation. It went dormant. It didn't die. It went dormant when man fell and at a new birth our faith was regenerated it was reignited to come alive and so we grow the faith we are looking for is already in us if not jesus would not have told 
bind Bartimaeus in Mark chapter 10 and verse 52. He says, be of good cheer, your, your faith has made thee whole. Your faith has made thee whole. Your own faith, the faith that you were created with, that is the sublimity of faith. Faith is already in us. Faith was created with us because we carry the image of God and God operates by the instrument an instrument and wavelength of faith. So God said, Christ said to Bartimaeus, your faith, that faith is already in you, working in you and doing that which is necessary for you to excel and to succeed, no matter the, the barrage of contention that this world brings. All we need to do is to keep feeding our faith. Just like you feed your body, your flesh with food and drink and therefore results in your growth and your nourishment. Also, we need to nourish our faith. He says, according as his divine power had given unto us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who has called us to glory and virtue, that by these we might be partakers of his divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through faith. Loss. So faith, as you know, is a spiritual substance. I said last week that faith is the emblem that, that recognizes our spiritual nature. Faith is our spiritual emblem that gives us recognition anywhere we go. You know, just like when you uh, say you're, you, are, you see another, your tribesman somewhere else in the world. Let's say you're in America and let's say you're from the, you're from Tokyo, Japan, and you meet another man, another man, who, or, or you know, another person who is from Tokyo, Japan, in America. There is the connectivity of, 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 of life because you are both from the same source. So also, faith in you is the recognition, the emblem of your connectivity to the divine anywhere you appear. So our faith, the sublimity of our faith over the contentions of this world is already established. All we need to do is to bring them alive. He says that we are partakers of his divine nature. In Romans chapter 12 from verse 3, he said, according to the grace of God, which is given unto me to every man, that no man should think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, according as God has given to every man a measure of faith. So you see, God already gave to us faith from the beginning. Because when he created us, he created us in his image, that spiritual nature. And all we then need to do is to, is to feed that faith. And the first step to feeding that faith is true salvation. For when we come in contact with Christ, our faith in him, our faith for which God already created us with, that is a part of our existence, comes alive naturally. And therefore that faith in his you know, connects automatically with God because God already gave it to us at creation. He said, let us make man in our image. And God created man in his own image. In his image created he them, male and female. And then he said, I give you dominion. I says, and God therefore said, let me put them in an encasement called the body. So your faith was already a part of your creation and therefore your faith is superior to any other thing that you may have, that you may want to pursue in life, that you may want, that you may desire, because your faith was created with you. And all you have to do, whether you know Christ or not, that faith is there because you are created in the image of God. And when you meet with Christ, he ignites that faith to come alive. So he said to them, he said to the woman with the issue of blood, your faith has made thee whole. whole. Your faith has made the whole. Your faith, only that faith that you already have, will come alive by the power of the Holy Spirit and will bring you to that wealthy place in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray, God, that you will realize that your faith is already embedded in you, that faith is already a part of you, and that at creation, that faith became yours because you were created by God to give you, you know, and you, therefore you share the attributes of God. Because faith is a spiritual force, 
and that force was part of your creation. He says in First Second Corinthians chapter four verse thirteen, he says, "We having the same spirit of faith." So you see that faith is not a worldly acquirement. Faith is an embodiment of or the attribution of our creation ready already existing existing in us. He says, "We having the same spirit of faith as we have." You see, as, as they believe, therefore they speak. We also believe. Why? Because we share the same spirit of faith. It is the same faith that is in Adam. It is the same faith that is in Abraham. The same faith that God used in all of these men to bring about transformation and turn around in the world is the same faith that we possess. And it's my prayer that your, your light will come alive by this reality. That you know that you were created, you are a product of faith because faith is a spiritual force and you are that force is already resident in you and all you need to do is to find expression for that faith. You need to nurture the faith. You need to feed the faith. You need to encourage the faith. So the Bible says, grow in grace and in the knowledge of God. When you grow in grace and in the knowledge of God, your faith automatically grows. And your faith, as it grows, it shows its superiority over the affairs of life. And that's why you will always triumph everywhere and in any place where faith comes alive. Because that is your original nature, the nature of faith. Why? Because you were created by the same God who operates by or with, the, or with faith in all sphere of existence. All that you will do, I said last week that it was faith that saved you and it is faith that will raise you up. Faith in Christ was the ultimate, ultimate, you know, aspiration for everyone who desires eternal life. It is your faith that saved, that saved you, that faith that is already a part of your existence. It is that faith that will raise you up. So it says, we have the same spirit of faith, that faith that created us. That faith by which we came into existence. It says we know that the world were created by the word of God. And the things that are seen were not made of the things which do appear. Faith is the spiritual substance that brought about our creation. And faith is the attribute, our natural attribute because of who we are. We are spiritual in nature. We are spiritual entities. And we are spiritual beings. Remember, it says in 1 Corinthians 15 from verse 45 he says ye which is it, it, it is this is first the night ye are sown a natural man and ye are raised a spiritual man he said it is first the natural then the spiritual it is my prayer that you will come al your faith will come alive today to know that you don't need to be acquiring faith as an external factor because faith is already in you. When God created us, he already placed in us a measure of faith. We already have it. All we need to do is to bring it alive. All we need to do is to believe that our faith carries the superiority over the affairs of this life. Is to understand that we are spiritual beings and therefore we carry a spiritual connection to our Creator that gives us dominion in the face of the oppositions of life, in the contention of life, in the contention with this mundane world, we have the sublimity of faith, the empowerment for faith to triumph at every facet of our lives is the most important factor of our existence. We know we are, you know, we are the carriers of faith. He said, we know, we know. We know that we are carriers of that divine nature. We know that we are the carriers of that divine existence. We know that we are partakers of that divine, 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 divine nature. Now I pray God that today your, that, that reality will come alive in you. That at creation, faith was part of your attribution. And as you grow in faith, as you grow in Christ, that faith is all you need for you to achieve your success in life you know in hebrews 11 from verse 1 up to the end it cataloged how faith was instrumental in the successes and dominions that they enjoy 
He said, through faith, they subdued the mud of lions. Through faith, they put the armies of the aliens to flight. Through faith, the women received their dead back to life. Through faith, they shot the mud of lions. Through faith, they quenched the fiery furnace. That faith is already in you. Don't be, uh, you know, in amazement to say, I, I don't have faith. You have faith because he already gave us a measure of faith because faith, faith is part of our attribution and we are empowered by it from creation. And all we need to do to keep it alive is to recognize that faith needs to be awakened. That by the Bible says in the Hebrew, in Proverbs 20 verse 27, it says the spirit of man is the candle of the Lord, searching the inward parts of the belly. What does that mean? That the spiritual nature of man from existence, from creation, is God's candle in searching, out, in searching the inward parts of his belly. He said the spirit of man is the candle of the Lord, searching the inward parts of his belly. That spirit at creation is man's light by faith in searching out his destiny and his future. He says, and in, in, in Job chapter 32 from verse 8, he said there is a spirit in man and the inspiration of the Almighty gives him understanding. There is a spirit in man and the inspiration of the Almighty. What does that mean? It says there is a spirit in you. What's that spirit? The spirit of creation. It's not talking about the Holy Spirit. It's talking about your spirit man, the real you, that you that is covered by your body, that you that is encased in this mortal form. It says there is a spirit in man and the inspiration of the Almighty gives him understanding. When you understand that you are a spiritual being and therefore faith is part of your attribution, you begin to walk in perpetual triumph. You begin to walk and excel in this mortal realm because you are a spiritual being living in a body, encased in a body, in order for you to have dominion on this planet. Because he says, let them have dominion. Let them be fruitful. Let them multiply. Let them replenish. And let them have dominion. That was, God had to give you a body in order for you to exhibit all of those commands. Because he has given you the earth. The Bible says, the earth has given to the sons of men. The heaven is the Lord. The, the heaven is, is the Lord, but the earth are they given to the sons of men? I pray, God, that that reality will hit you this day and that you would understand that faith is part of your attribute. Faith is part of your, is part of your DNA. Faith is already resident in you and all that you need to do is to bring it alive. The spirit of the Lord, of man, is the candle of the Lord. That is, your spirit is what God uses to bring about the success and the breakthrough and the exploits that God once achieved on planet earth. That is your spirit man encased in your body is what God uses to bring about dominion on this, on this space or on this planet. I pray God that you will come alive from that reality today and you will go with that knowledge that God created you and part of your attribution is faith and that all that you require for success and victory is already resident in your existence. I believe, God, that that will be your testimony and that when you come to that realization, the morning stars will sing for joy and the sons of God, the morning stars will sing together and the sons of God will shout for joy. The Lord bless you and keep you and the Lord cause his face to shine upon you. I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and to give you your own inheritance amongst them that are sanctified. Until next week, God bless you and have a wonderful week. Goodbye.